Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I have a video for you featuring Heffy Doodle. The stamps I'll be coloring today are from the Heffy Doodle Dino Time stamp set and I just decided to color all of the dinos from the stamp set in blues, monochromatic blues. Probably not very realistic. I mean we don't actually know what dinosaurs look like. We kind of guess and their skin could have been a variety of colors, probably greens and browns because, you know, that's what a lot of other animals are and help them blend into their environment. But I'm not necessarily trying to go for super realistic today. I just thought it'd be fun to try a monochromatic look. And um, I thought it would be a fun way to color up a whole stamp set if I just used the same colors on every single stamp. So I am using B... 34, 37, and 39 for really dark colors, but most of it is the B16, 14, and 12. Those are the lighter Copic colors that I'm using, but like on the T-Rex's belly, I used a couple of dark markers, and that's the uh, B34, 37, 39. What I'm mostly using is the brighter blues. And at first I was trying to think about like cast shadows and drop shadows, like his head would make a cast shadow onto his body and his head and body would make a cast shadow onto his wing. And so that's where I was going with it. But sometimes it doesn't like look like it makes the most sense. And I think that part of the reason that I'm having trouble with that late lately is that I'm making the shadows too big and I probably need to work on making some subtler shadows. And I, that might be something that if you feel like your coloring isn't quite where you want it to be, I might suggest you try that as well, just because I personally found that helpful to try to make smaller shadows. Obviously, you know, learning from this project and trying to incorporate that going forward, but it was a helpful thing for me to think about. And knowing that I was using these bigger shadows, or if I, you know, want to use the bigger shadows, which is fine too, um, that maybe not trying to add as much detail is better and just to pick one shadow spot and even just having one darker area and one lighter area will still usually give your character some dimension and ultimately I think that's all that any of us are going for is just a little bit well sorry not any of us because there are amazing colorists out there and you know I have done some really detailed coloring in the past too but like when you're just trying to give the like impression of some interest even just one shadow can go a long way so here um oh also i'm also completely coloring outside of the lines because i'm going to fussy cut all of these out i didn't buy coordinating dies i could have cut them on my scan and cut but i had stamped all of these on little scraps of extra paper and so i would have had to put like a bunch of stuff through my scan and cut and i thought well, these are relatively simple. I bet if I speed up the coloring by scribbling outside the lines, I could make up for the fussy cutting time that way, if that makes sense. Um, so instead of trying to be so precise. And then I'm blending out the scales. That's where I use those darker colors. Once I did that, I realized that he needed a bit more of a shadow look on the top or like that really bright color in the scales just didn't make sense to me and kind of stood up and it stood out in a negative way. Um, so I just showed you the cutting or sorry, the coloring of two of the dinos to just give you a few thoughts and tips and hopefully that was helpful. Um, and then I'm going to move on even though I'm going to, I did color all of the dinosaurs. So I'm going to make a bunch of hills. And one of the reasons that I wanted to share this card and video with you today is because I tried something a little bit different and kind of fun with making my grass. So first, I just laid down some Distress Oxide ink on three little strips of paper. I used crushed olive, peeled paint, and, oh sorry, uh, bundled sage and forest moss. I guess it was all four of those but I think the problem is I used bundled sage and it was too light and so I went for the crushed olive instead but 
what was important, what I want to mention here, is that I felt like the scene looked a little more realistic and interesting by using a dark green in the background and then making my greens as my hills come closer to the viewer lighter. It added a bit more depth and dimension. So that was why I picked the three different colors of green. I believe now looking at it that I did pick, this is the bundled sage, and then when I put it down next to the others, it just felt like too light and too bright. And so I went in with the crushed olive to make it a little bit darker. These are the Distress Oxides, so it works really well because they're pigment inks, so they kind of sit on top of each other a little bit. Uh, they do blend, but it allows you to cover up color a little bit easier. And so I felt like, yeah, again, that color went in a bit better. Obviously, having the bundled sage underneath affected the color a little bit, but not a big deal. I'm going to be using Lawn Fawn Stitched Hillside Border Dyes, and I'm going to cut the hillside for all of them, but I'm going to alternate. So like one's going to have a big hill on the left, then the next layer on the right, then the next layer on the left. I do want to dry all of these a little bit before I move on to my grass technique. And I'm going to do that technique before I do the die cutting. So I wanted a way for it to not look like flat solid colored grass. Like why not? just cut three pieces of green cardstock, for instance. So what I did was I took a big fat paintbrush that, but that wasn't super dense. So the bristles are a little spread out. I spritzed it with some water and then I wiped it down. And those, the paint strokes or the bristles, those being wet reacted with the Distress Oxide ink and created the look of a bit of grass. It's a really bold effect, like they're not like little tiny pieces of grass because I swiped all the way down, but you could certainly experiment with it. And I did think that it was important to not fuss with it too much drying it um, in terms of like don't pat it or anything like that because the lines will become less distinct. So you could either hit it with a heat gun or you could just let it air dry. I will say you could experiment with whatever brushes you happen to have, but it should be something with like loose bristles. The paintbrush that I used was something that I got in like a pack at the dollar store years ago. And I've usually used it as like a cleaning up brush, like brushing things off of my desk. Um, but it worked out well for this technique. So just kind of play with what you have and see if you enjoy that look as well. So you can see them all dried now and they have that little bit of texture effect of some grass. And I am going to make a mark for where, what area my hills will cover because I am going to add a sky here. I want to know where the horizon line is going to be. So that's what I'm making those pencil marks for. I made them lightly and then I erased them even further because Distress Oxide ink will pick up the pencil and move it around and kind of dirty things up. And I knew I'd be using a lot of yellow in that area. So you definitely want to be really careful with that. I also made the line a little bit under where I thought I would actually be doing my coloring or my inking so that it was less likely to become a problem. For the upper part of the sky, I'm going to use a tiny bit of salty ocean and a bunch of tumbled glass. I laid the tumbled glass down first then a bit of salty ocean on top and I'm coming back and blending it. I'm just using the Tim Holtz blender tools because it's what I have on hand. Um, over the years, I've like tried many other things and I know there's some like really great stencil brush options and ink laying options out there right now. Um, but after being burned a few times, like for them not being as nice of an effect as they said they were gonna be, or like I switched from, you know, the rectangles to the rounds. I feel like there's like always a new way to blend um, your inks. But if any of you have one that you really felt like was worth the money, please leave it in the video description. For now, I'm kind of just making do with my Tim Holtz blender tools. To make the look of a, I think it's supposed to be a sunrise. Um, I guess I should know because I'm, it's me, but... Anyway, um, I think I was looking up sunrise when I came up with this idea. And I took 
fossilized amber and mustard seed as my two yellows. And I used the blender tool to create like a big splotch circle to be the sun. And then I blended it out with the lighter one. So I believe the circle is fossilized amber and the lighter yellow is the mustard seed. Then I blended it again with the tumbled glass. It does kind of create like a green color there, which is not exactly what you'd see in the sky, but I think it actually worked out better than I anticipated because at first I was a little bit scared of that green color, but in the end, it doesn't look as awkward as I thought it might. And I did tend to lend towards like making it just a little bit of that yellow at the bottom. I also reinforced the circle. So like I put the fossilized amber circle down but then I covered it again at the very end just to really like emphasize it and make it look like a sun there. I'm going to stamp and heat emboss my sentiment. I'm going to use black on white or white on black. I don't do this very often, but I really like the way it looks. I feel like sentiments pop so much more and I'm like, why do I not emboss more often? And then I embossed and I kind of remembered why because I'm not very good at it, I guess. Like I put down the embossing powder bag and all that and I still got little flicks of embossing powder where I don't want them. So yeah, maybe I just need to be a little bit more liberal in my application of my embossing bag there. The distressed edge rectangle that I'm using is like one of my favorite dyes. It works so well for different animal things. Like I just like that versus a plain rectangle. And that is from Cat Scrappiness. A lot of cats' basic dyes, like her rectangles, her circles, ovals, squares, etc., are like my go-tos, particularly her rectangles, because she has some unique ones and the price is quite good. Like you usually get like quite a few size rectangles that nest into each other for less than 20 bucks. So compared to some other dyes, I enjoy her sets, especially this Distressed Edge one here. So after I decided where I was going to put my sentiment, I started kind of playing with my dinos, where are they all gonna go? And the card was feeling kind of boring. And I was second guessing like, why? Am I filming this card? Am I even, do I have anything even interesting to share? These are the thoughts that like go through my head when I'm crafting. Like I always like, I turn on the camera a lot, but I don't share every video. Like I don't share every card that I make. Um, and I thought that the grass technique was hopefully fun and that you guys would enjoy that. But um, I did want to add a little something extra to this card. So things worth commenting on. I am stamping with my Distress Oxide inks. They're pretty good at stamping. Um, I did, and you've heard this before if you've watched some of my more recent videos, instead of popping things up with foam tape, I have just turned to using card stock scraps, double layering them and gluing them behind my critters as a way of like saving a tiny amount of crafting budget. But like when you use a lot of foam tape, it, it certainly adds up. But I also there, I splotched some blue onto my sun. And I have my Tombow sand eraser there, which helps, but I didn't want to redo all of the inking. And so I just decided to carefully place the pterodactyl such that he covered up that ink splotch that, you know, so that I didn't have to get too concerned or start again or try to figure this out, et cetera, et cetera. I just covered it up. You could have also like put another heart there, but I was trying to keep the blue hearts mostly in the areas where the sun wasn't. And then I realized there was an even tinier heart. So I did stamp a few more of those to kind of fill things out a bit. And um, I also am trying to be careful in the way that I place the dinosaurs that they don't look like awkward with a heart coming out of a weird part of their head or something like that. Um, and I'm gonna layer a few of them tucked behind the hills just to add a little bit more interest to the scene whereas if they were all standing above the hills it wouldn't look as layered so again I hope that makes sense and is a you know a helpful little tip there I felt like it just needed one teeny tiny thing and I think it was because I wanted to pull the sentiment in a little bit so I use these enamel hearts because that's very similar to the look of embossing these hearts that I'm using are like 
random target dollar spot hearts. So I won't be able to link them for you or anything, but everyone has a million enamels, I'm sure, at home or like nouveau drops that you can make them with. I will say my distress ink wasn't dry enough to be putting these on at this point. And they did kind of like all get inky on the back instead of sticking and they fell off. So I had to wait till my card was dry and re-glue them all on. But those little hearts, I thought, finished off the card nicely. And that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials, including some other heffy doodle ones, you can subscribe to my channel. I'll, I'll leave you links to some other similar cards or um, other videos to share with you. Thanks for watching. Bye.